now going to talk about history of English literature and uh, today's part is the age of Shakespeare. We are talking about poetry and uh, especially erotic poetry written and composed in this era or in this age. We will be talking about the works by Christopher Marlowe and uh, Shakespeare. Here are some works I have to talk about and some important and famous anthologies written. One question. Today I will leave you with one question and uh, themes we will be talking about and the uh, story of Venus and Adonis what happened that time uh, when he wrote this and what is the story of this work. So before starting uh, the channel I want to request you for one thing. Uh, please subscribe, share and like if you have pressed all, already subscribe button don't forget to subscribe uh, and press the bell icon because whenever I will be uploading a video I will upload video you will be notified. Second thing is share and like if you share and like it helps us to grow our channel and it really helps okay so let's start uh, today's topic so today's topic is poetry Whenever we are uh, talking about poetry or we are preparing for any exam, we should know the publication date and influence, influenced by, like if we are talking about Venus and Adonis, it, uh, it was, uh, you know, Shakespeare was motivated by work of uh, Ovid and uh, the Greek uh, mythologies and uh, Greek stories. So he wrote this, out of that motivation he wrote and he composed Venus and Adonis. All right, and uh, later, like uh, we were talking about Spencer, poet, poet, we call him like here, poet, poet, Spencer. If you didn't watch my yesterday's video, if you haven't watched video nahi dekhi hai, Spencer ki ya Sydney ki, you can check the videos check kar sakte. So, usme aapko is answer mil jayega. So, aap dekh sakte ki jaise Spencer ne influence kiya tha ki isko kids ko poetry likhne ke liye. So, isi tarah se Shakespeare was influenced by Ovid going to talk about sonnet and sonneteers of uh, is of Shakespeare this is called golden age for sonnets in this video we will be talking about uh, about main characteristics of sonnets of uh, this time means age of Shakespeare and we will be talking about six sonneteers Thomas Watson Edmund Spencer Sir Philip Sidney Shakespeare Daniel and Dryden we will see some uh, specific qualities of sonnets and if you want to watch detailed video on uh, what sonnet is the types of sonnets from where it started and uh, the derived from the word everything sari cheeze agar aap dekhna chahte hain to mere mere channel pe aap search kijiye to aapko ek link link detail mein dalne ki koshish karunga description box mein but if you don't get it, you can go to my channel and search for it. If you want to English literature, any topic, structuralism, post-structuralism, uh, anything, objective correlatives, any topic, I have uh, more than 300 videos for English literature topics. Okay. Uh, in last year, I made. So, you can search any topic from English literature, like uh, if you are searching for Fairy Queen, uh, you need to search Fairy Queen by Kaushik and you will get the topic there. Okay. Uh, any topic you will, uh, the A's is, any A's in English literature I have already covered uh, two times. But this time I am just focusing on uh, in depth like main characteristics and other things. Okay. So let's go ahead. Uh, first a small uh, introduction. The sonnet started in 14th century in Italy. It came uh, through Italy to England. Okay, and uh, it has, uh, that's why we have influences here, like Italian and French influences, right? There are some people like uh, White and Surrey, as uh, I have already told you, uh, that you can check out that video. Uh, some more things we have here, special things, like there is one question that who has written 18 lines sonnets. Sonnet is 14 line poem, isn't it? 14 line poem, so we have 8 plus 6 sometimes. And uh, in case of Shakespeare, we have uh, 444, four, four. okay, and 444 four, four and plus 2 in case of Shakespeare. And uh, other wrote 14 lines poems, uh, Sestic and uh, Octave. So let's go ahead. First is Thomson, Thomas Watson. So Thomas Watson is the guy who wrote 18 lines sonnets. 
he wrote total sonnets, hundred sonnets he wrote, and uh, the name of the collection of hundred sonnets was uh, "Passions or Poems of Love." So this is a question for your higher level. Next one is second volume by Thomas Watson was The Tears of Fancy and uh, he chose to write down in 14 lines as you can see here. Some people are complaining that uh, it is not visible. So try to watch in 720p and on full screen on your cell phone. Uh, so it will be clear and uh, try to listen to me as well as I read these things as well for you. Okay, while discussing these things. So the tears of fancy in 14 lines, again, he came to 14 lines, uh, you know, sonnet structure or love distant. So these uh, tears of fancy or love distant was the second volume. So first volume was passions or poems of love by Thomas Watson. Is of Shakespeare and particularly prose. We have completed poetry, the topic poetry. And uh, this is day 34th. So, before starting this video, I would like to request you, a humble request to you. Guys, just subscribe if you have not already subscribed my channel. So, first is religious works. So, there are categories. If we study in categories uh, and we can classify things, we can categorize things well, we remember them for a long time. So here is religious work. So religious works were Hooker's Ecclesiastical, Ecclesiastical Poetry. That's sometimes tough pronunciation in English literature. The authorized version of Bible. These two works. And you don't need to go deep in these two works. Just know the name of the works. Now here, Raleigh's History. Richard Huckler's Travel, or you can say Travelogue. And Travel Literature. He worked for travel literature and he is also called the father of travel literature because he is the point. This is the starting point of travel literature. That's why his father. Literary criticism, Sydney, we have already gone through his work. Isn't it? Two days before. If you have not watched the complete video, you can check out that video. Just scroll down the videos. Ben Johnson wrote essays. He wrote 106 videos in total here. So here is a shortcut to remember his works like uh, in 97 he wrote 10 essays in 12 it was 38 in number and in 25 58 in total 126 we will be talk talking in detail about these works. So let's come to the father of English essay Edmund Spencer and this is sub part of is of Shakespeare and this is third part Edmund Spencer if you are uh, studying Edmund Spencer you can make keywords these uh, phrases or you can say words aap sabhi ko inko keywords ko yaad rakhna hai jaise poets poet poets poet maker true child of renaissance and dryden's master so you can make your notes after watching this video, please don't forget to like, at least one like, and uh, share because it helps us to grow our channel and it motivates me to go in depth and uh, bringing some facts out. So let's start today's video. His first work was this Shefford calendar, which got published in 1579, but his magnum opus is Fairy Queen. I have already made uh, two separate videos on Fairy Queen, so you can check out my channel. What is important in Shefford calendar, what we should know about Shefford calendar, that it is based on Theocrites and Virgil's Bucolica. This is the work and such questions are asked in uh, every level of exam, TGT, PGT or UGC net. Series of Ecologues. And uh, this is in pastoral ecologues. This work is written in pastoral form. Raffles' unfortunate love for Rosalind. Rosalind. Aapko ye naam yaad rakhna hai. And now let's talk about his autobiographical point here. You can see which got published in 1595. Here, 
द नेम ऑफ ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल पोएम विच इज आस्ट इन इवन यूजीसी नेट एग्जाम कॉलिंग क्लाउड्स इट्स क्लाउड्स कम होम अगेन हियर वन नेम कॉलिंग क्लाउड कॉलिंग क्लाउड इज स्पेंसर एंड बिकॉज दिस इज ऑल्सो पेस्टोरल एलर्जी और पेस्टोरल पोएम अनदर शेफर्ड is sir walter ralph now who is sir walter ralph he is friend of spencer this is best friend so he is writing on death of sir walter ralph now next work is amorty amorty got published in 1595 with same autobiographical poem as you can see here it has 88 petrarchan sonnets and it is written for elizabeth boyle now who is elizabeth boyle elizabeth boyle was uh his wife and and i can uh, tell you some more facts about this later i will tell you the rhyme scheme of this work is a b a b b c b c c d c d so you can see here he has uh, three quatrains and what is difference uh it is different than shakespeare because shakespeare uses e e he uses a couplet so you can uh, remember this thing shakespeare uses couplet but he is using three quatrains for sonnet we know sonnet has 14 lines elizabeth boyle he got married to her in 1594 here one word which is related to spencer and that is maidenliness maidenliness was used by colrus for this work amorty these sonnets and this this word maidenliness was used because of its writing style its sweetness or rapture of love so that's why colrus was uh, you know uh, influenced by the writing style or composing style and rhyming scheme that's why because lots of poets like keats dun john dun and colridge they were influenced by edmund spenser he is called a poet maker because they they got influenced and later if you find uh, here what was uh, you know impact on keats a thing of beauty is joy forever is the line which has influence of spencer so these are the now <clears throat> now let's come to this uh we can say this phrase true child of renesa why we are calling him true child of renesa because spencer is coming after renesa and he is using the you know qualities of renesa now i will not go in depth for qualities of renesa if you are watching this video first time uh, this is day 30 you should check out my previous videos about renesa you will get some qualities of renesa and then you will be able to analyze this edmund spencer edmund spencer ki agar aap dekhenge ki unke work mein jo cheeze hain wo aapko renesa ki qualities dikhengi that's why he is child of renesa okay now let's come to his two important points and i'm not going in detail with these points because already i, I have made separate videos for epithelium and uh, prothelium so you should check out those videos which got published in uh, you know uh, 1595 and 1596 you need not to remember this if you know when he was born okay so he was born on 1552 and 1599 uh, he died so if you know the dates or years you can make correlations so let's go ahead epithelium what is important in this work is uh, it shows happiness sweetness rapture of love and that's why it is called uh, you know by colrus maidenliness prothelium arpedian elegy this elegy is uh, following arcadian uh, structure and it is written on the death of sydney sir philip sydney yesterday's video we uh, covered philip sydney and his works 
So you can uh, remember these things. Like on the death of uh, Sir Walter Raleigh, he wrote uh, an autobiographical poem which was named Collins Cloud Comes Home Again. And on death of Sydney, he wrote he wrote Prothelemian in 1596. Here Ben Johnson says, "Read no language." This is uh, again a quotation related to Edmund Spencer. So these are important uh, fact about Edmund Spencer. And if you are preparing for TGT, PGT, UGC, NET, whatever level you are preparing, uh, we should keep on studying our literature because. Hello guys, you are most welcome again on my channel and uh, today is 32 as you know and we are going to talk about history of English literature and uh, today's part is the age of Shakespeare. We are talking about poetry and uh, especially erotic poetry written and composed in this era or in this age. We will be talking about the works by Christopher Marlowe and uh, Shakespeare. Here are some works I have. To talk about and some important and famous anthologies written one question today i will leave you with one question and uh themes we will be talking about and uh story of venus and adonis what happened that time uh when he wrote this and what is the story of this work so before starting uh, the channel i want to request you for one thing uh, please subscribe, share and like if you have pressed all, already subscribe button don't forget to subscribe uh, and press the bell icon because whenever I will be uploading a video I will upload video you will be notified second thing is share and like if you share and like it helps us to grow our channel and it really helps okay so let's start uh, today's topic so today's topic is poetry Whenever we are uh, talking about poetry or we are preparing for any exam, we should know the publication date and influence, influenced by, like if we are talking about Venus and Adonis, it, uh, it was, uh, you know, Shakespeare was motivated by work of uh, Ovid and uh, the Greek uh, mythologies and uh, Greek stories. So he wrote this, out of that motivation he wrote and he composed Venus and Adonis. All right, and uh, later, like uh, we were talking about Spencer, poet, poet, we call him like here, poet, poet, Spencer. If you didn't watch my yesterday's video, if you haven't watched video nahi dekhi hai, Spencer ki ya Sydney ki, aap, uh, ki videos check kar sakte. To usme aapko iska answer mil jayega. To aap dekh sakte ki jaise Spencer ne influence kiya tha ki isko kids ko poetry likhne ke liye. To isi tarah se Shakespeare was influenced by Ovid and other Greek writers. That's why he was composing these works. All right, so publication date, we should remember, influenced by and later whom were influenced. Ki kaun uske baad mein, is tarah ki jo details hai, humare paas exact notes honne chahiye. Okay, uh, for our exams, whether it is TGT, PZT or UGC net or any other literature or any other exam. So for literature, we are, particularly we are talking about dedicated, whom he dedicated like uh, such questions are asked in, in exams. So let's go ahead. The themes they were writing in that uh, in that particular time. Okay, in age of Shakespeare, patriotism, war, rivalry, metaphysical poet, uh, poetry they used, love, poetry, philosophical problems. So they also wrote some uh, poetry on philosophical problems and uh, their solutions and influence so partic particularly they got influenced in that uh, time Italian sensuality so because this is erotic poetry we will find uh, sensual things here so especially they were influenced by Italian sensuality Later in, in today's video, probably we will be talking about uh, sonnet. So we will see that it came through Italy and uh, there. So here, Italian sensuality. Okay. So sometimes in uh, you know UGC net exams, such deep things are asked and they are correlated with uh, the things. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's start this discussion. Before starting this, see here, 64 and 64, you can correlate things. If you correlate things, uh, we remember the things for a long, long, long time. 
and I usually use this method of correlation. So here you can see 64 and 64 because he was born. Marlowe was born in uh, 64 and Shakespeare was born in 64. So we remember this 1564 here if we are 1564 because we are talking about 16th century. I hope you are getting कि आपको 64 64 याद रखना है शेक्सपियर का आपको पता है मार्लो का भी आपको पता चल जाएगा और आप यूपी टीजीटी पीजीटी और उत्तराखंड एलटी या पीजीटी की तैयारी कर रहे हैं तो इस तरह के फैक्ट आपको पूछे जाते हैं यूजीसी नेट में यूजुअली इस तरह के फैक्ट नहीं पूछे जाते कुछ पब्लिकेशन से रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन आते हैं टू थ्री क्वेश्चन बट नॉट मोर देन दैट तो और टीजीटी पीजीटी लेवल के लिए ये सारे आपको याद होनी चाहिए कि कब पब्लिश हुआ और क्या चीजें बट uh, for in-depth knowledge, you need to work on themes, okay, and social influence. So let's talk about Christopher Marlowe here. Hero and Leander, his work, it is incomplete work, and it was incomplete work, and because it was incomplete because uh, of his untimely death, and it got completed by this gentleman, uh, George Chapman. George Chapman is uh, not only, you know, he completed this work, but he was a great translation. So he got some uh, things translated. Like first one was Iliad by Homer, Odyssey, 1613 and 1611. These are not dates of publication of these works, but these are translation dates, 1613 and in 1611. So do you remember it is, uh, you know, 1616, if you remember this, 1616. Shakespeare dies in that, uh, on that year. So here, incomplete George Chapman, we have gone through this detail. Very important thing is that he was using epigrammatic lines. You can find out this work, this word, epigrammatic, and uh, you will find that it is, you know, important to understand this work if you are going to talk about uh, Malo. Whoever loved some epigrammatic grammatic lines are taken from uh, the works of Christ to Marlowe. Whoever loved that loved not at first sight. So I decided that I will at least, uh, you know, include Ek do jo us time ki aapke paas quotations hongi, important quotation hongi. In next video, se main, is video se maine show kiya, ki at least one or two quotations I will put. And one question for you. It is not in our power to love or hate. Good question, quotation to remember, isn't it? So here, Shakespeare, Venus in Adonis, uh, it got published in 1593 and it was dedicated to Earl of Southampton. And I will uh, <clears throat> give, you a, give you a homework. Find out the meaning of Earl and what was Earl at that time and write down in comment box. Okay, next is... Okay, Venus and Adonis, what is the story in short? Venus and Adonis ki short story kya hai? Uh, Venus is a skilled lover, means she was skilled in love making. And Adonis is a skilled sport person. She loves uh, Adonis, Adonis ko pyaar karti hai. Lekin Adonis kya hai? He is busy with his hunting things. Later what happened, he uh, got killed by wild boar. A wild boar usse... Uh, and then he becomes stone or a stone banjata. this is the story the rape of Lucrece here it is a kind of you know opposite here simply there was a rape and uh, Lucrece got raped by Tarquin T-A-R-Q-U-I-N Tarquin Okay, and uh, she was chased wife of someone and she got ra raped. This is the story. Now, next one is some famous anthologies written in this uh, at that point of time. First is Tortoise Miscellany in 1557, The Paradise of uh, Dainty Device in 1576, A Handful of Pleasant Delights, Phoenix Nest, and the England is ha England's Halloween. And uh, for you guys, there is one question. Who called Spencer Poet's Poet? Write down in comment box. Now the topic is particularly drama we will be talking about. We will be making two, three more videos on uh, the same topic. And in this video, we will be focusing on the University Wits. Uni University Wits is a group of uh, writers 
or dramatist you can say or playwright who were before Shakespeare and uh, they influenced Shakespeare. University Wits जो आए थे Oxford और Cambridge से थे जो कि एक पर्टिकुलर ग्रुप था उनको यूनिवर्सिटी वेट्स बोला जाता है जिसका मैंने यहाँ पे एक शॉर्टकट लिखा है पी जी के एल एम एन तो यहाँ पर इनके नाम भी है आप लोगों को इन्फ्लुएंस जो उनका रहा है और डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ ड्रामा जो की आपका यूजीसी नेट सिलेबस में भी है उसके बारे में हम बात करेंगे सो आई एम जस्ट कमिंग फ्रॉम द मार्शल आर्ट प्रैक्टिस और डोंट जस्ट माई अटाया so let's come to the topic again three main characters characteristics of classical drama what are the three main characteristics of classical drama to understand uh, drama we need to know these things first is uni unity of subject and of pure tragedy if uh, they wanted to write down pure tragedy in classical drama it must have unity of subject Second thing is three uni unities. Whenever we are talking about classical dramas, we talk about three unities: time, uh, unity of time, unity of place, unity of action. इनके बारे में हम डिटेल्ड स्टडी करेंगे लिटरी क्रिटिसिज्म में कि ये unity of time, unity of place और unity of action होता क्या है. Next is little or no dramatic action. So these three particular characteristics we should know. There were two th two types of theaters. at the time of uh, university wits you can say or uh, at the uh, at the time of age of shakespeare so there were three two kinds of theater one was one was the private theater second was the public theater what was the main difference it was you know open public theaters were open aap keh sakte hain ki lower level ke theater hote the open space tha daylight mein kaam chalana padta tha aur all classes हर तरह के लोग वहां पर थिएटर में आते थे फर्स्ट टाइप वॉज ऑफ प्राइवेट थिएटर एज यू कैन सी एंड रूफ उसमें छत होती थी आर्टिफिशियल लाइट इसका मतलब वहां पे रात को भी ड्रामा प्ले हो सकते थे एंड हाई क्लास ओनली हाई क्लास पीपल यूज टू गो देर लाइक किंग्स एंड नाइट्स एंड अदर्स ड्यू टू द पब्लिक थिएटर्स एंड ओपन थिएटर्स सॉलिल एंड असाइड बोस वर इन्वेंटेड और नीडेड क्योंकि हमें ओपन थिएटर में हमारे पास कोई भी प्रॉप्स नहीं होते थे तो इस वजह से हमें सॉल लिखी और असाइड की जरूरत पड़ती थी कि जैसे एक सिचुएशन में आपको बताऊ कि अगर हमें दिखाना है कि सी है समुद्र है तो हमारे पास उस तरह की कोई सीनरी नहीं होती थी हमें पर्टिकुलरली बताना पड़ेगा कि इस तरह की कोई सीनरी है रात हो रहा है दिन हो रहा है इस तरह से हमें सारी चीजें डिस्क्राइब करनी पड़ती थी पब्लिक थिएटर में राइट सो so, चलिए थिएटर और स्टेज की बात करें तो एक एक डेट हमें याद रखनी है 1576 बिकॉज दिस वाज द ईयर व्हेन फर्स्ट प्ले हाउस वाज इरेक्टेड जो खड़ा किया गया पहला प्ले हाउस इट वाज द प्लेस सोडिच सो सोडिच द प्रोनाउंसिएशन यू कैन फाइंड आउट दिस वर दिस वाज द फर्स्ट थिएटर व्हिच व्हिच गॉट इरेक्टेड ऑलराइट इन 1576 सम इंपॉर्टेंट थिएटर्स वर द थिएटर द रोज द ग्लोब the swan and the fortune this means the globe theater was related to shakespeare as well gobbledick was the first play which was written and uh, it was classical as we talked about here the characters of classical uh, tragedy and not not an ensec will wrote the first tragedy gobbledick now let's talk about the university wits which is most important and in this video or in this particular uh please i am going to focus on uh, their main main thing which influenced shakespeare and uh, you know the later generation of uh, playwrights and dramatists so let's un understand this their contribution inka jo contribution tha aane wali generation ke liye dramatists ke liye playwrights ke playwrights ke liye to unke liye kya unka important ek contribution tha uske bare mein baat karenge and later we will talk about their important works and their dates and other things all right so let's go uh, ahead first is lily as you can say pgk element here is shortcut so l lily and lily was the leader lily was the leader to is tarah se aap yaad rakh sakte hain l leader l lily blank words in comedy so he was the first person he used blank words in comedy and shape to romantic comedy and he gave shape to romantic comedy which you will later find in shakespeare as well 
and it was adopted by Shakespeare, we can say. Pile, uh, first dramatic literary satire. So he was the first person who wrote first dramatic literary satire. It, its name was The Old Wife's Tale. Old Wife's Tale kya thi? Pahli dramatic literary satire thi. Romantic tragedy he was writing. Sec third was Robert Greene. Master of the plot construction. So he was the first person who uh, was concerned about the plot construction and romantic heroines. So here you can find out the examples of romantic heroines by uh, Robert Gray and romantic heroines we can find in Shakespeare later. Loss, Thomas Loss, the wounds of civil war, nothing new to theater. He, his contribution there was no new contribution uh, except like these three. He didn't contribute it a lot. So his main work was the wounds of civil war. Next is Nash, Thomas Nash, a pamphleteer. He was a pamphleteer. So here you can say N. Nash, Marlowe, okay, Kid, Green, and Pile. Kid, the Spanish tragedy, and a Spanish tragedy is a landmark. So we must go through the story of the Spanish tragedy because this is important for uh, our English literature exams too. So it was landmark. Why it was a landmark, a landmark in English literature? It had well constructed plot, revenge theme. So it was the first time revenge theme came uh, into existence. Next was devices were used to play within play. Like in Shakespeare, we later found that in uh, Hamlet as well. Hamlet may be hame milta hai, play within play. And uh, here are Nemo. Ye ek is ka tragic hero tha, jo ki quite different tha. Means hum yahan se ek separation, yahan se hum एक सेपरेशन फील कर सकते हैं क्लासिकल ट्रेजेडी से इसलिए थॉमस किट का जो स्पेनिश ट्रेजेडी है इसे इंपॉर्टेंट माना जाता है कि इससे पहले हम एक तरह से अगर हम इनका पूरा ही कंट्रीब्यूशन देखें यूनिवर्सिटी विट्स का तो इन्होंने जो क्लासिकल एक ट्रेजेडी का जो प्लॉट होता था सीनरी होती थी और एक थीम होती थी उससे उन्होंने सेपरेशन की तरफ ले गए और कुछ नया इन्होंने किया तो दैट्स वाई दीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड और इन्हीं के कई सारे ऐसे वर्क्स हैं जिनसे मोटिवेटेड होके इन्फ्लुएंस होके शेक्सपियर ने लिखा है मालो का जो टेम्पलिन है इसकी पूरी स्टोरी आप मेरे चैनल पे देख सकते हैं समरीज इन हिंदी एंड इन इंग्लिश बोथ सो हियर वी हैव मालो ब्लैंक वर्ड्स ही यूज्ड फॉर ट्रेजिडी फर्स्ट टाइम एंड डिपार्चर फ्रॉम द मॉरलिटी ट्रेजिशन अगर आप टेम्बोलिन की स्टोरी देखोगे तो टेम्बोलिन कोई मॉरल एक इंसान uh, uh, नहीं है जिसमें मॉरलिटी हमें देखने को नहीं मिलती ही जस्ट एम्बिशियस एंड अदर थिंग्स अगर आपको समझना है तो पूरी स्टोरी आप देख सकते हैं हिंदी और इंग्लिश दोनों में समरी आपको मिल जाएगी और राइट तो यहाँ पे हमें जो मेन चीज जो मालो का कंट्रीब्यूशन था वो क्या था डिपार्चर फ्रॉम मॉरलिटी ट्रेडिशन टूरिस्ट टॉपिक इज शेक्सपियर आज का जो टॉपिक है शेक्सपियर के बारे में बात करेंगे वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट हिज वर्कस एंड अबाउट हिज पीरियड्स लाइक फर्स्ट पीरियड सेकेंड थर्ड एंड फोर्थ पीरियड सो वी हैव डिवाइडेड हिज वर्क इन टू फोर पार्ट and what are the peculiar qualities of uh, his period that is important to understand in this video i have already made a video on his works and uh, i have uh, put their shortcuts to learn then ek already ek video banaya hai apne channel pe aap uh, videos playlist aur uh, videos mein jaake check kar sakte hain aap logo ko mil jayega but in this uh, video i am going to talk about its you know peculiar qualities of uh, the फोर पीरियड की कौन कौन से उनकी पर्टिकुलर क्वालिटीज थी आ, हर हर पार्ट में उन्होंने क्या क्या लिखा है सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट हिज लाइफ एंड सम इम्पोर्टेंट इवेंट्स इन हिज लाइफ सो फर्स्ट इज ही वॉज बॉर्न ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड अप्रिल फिफ्टीन सिक्सटी फोर इन एवन दैट्स वाई ही इज कॉल्ड द बार्ड ऑफ एवन जैसे कि एक बार ये टी जी टी एग्जाम में पूछा गया था कि बार्ड का मीनिंग क्या होता है तो बार्ड इज सिंपली पॉइंट सो बार्ड ऑफ एवन एवन जगह है जहाँ पे वो पैदा हुए थे सो बार्ड ऑफ एवन एवन की पॉइंट सो स्मॉल लेटिन लेस ग्रेक उनके बारे में बोला गया था कि उन्हें उन्होंने खुद बोला था ही हिमसेल्फ टोल्ड दैट ही न्यू स्मॉल लेटिन एंड लेस ग्रेक ग्रीन जो है यूनिवर्सिटी वेट्स वी टॉक्ड इन अर्लियर वीडियो अबाउट यूनिवर्सिटी वेट्स इन दैट वी सॉ ग्रीन एंड ग्रीन कॉल्ड हिम एन अप स्टार्ट क्रो ही लेफ्ट टू लंडन ही वेंट टू लंडन इन वेन ही वॉज ट्वेंटी टू ईयर्स ऑफ एज जब वो बाईस साल के थे वो चले गए थे लंडन एंड इट वॉज इन एटी सिक्स एटी सेवन राइट सो डू यू रिमेंबर दिस 
एटी सेवन इसका आप को रिलेशन बना सकते हैं किसी चीज से सो लेट मी गिव यू ऑप्शन इट वॉज द फर्स्ट एज सेकेंड एज सॉरी एज ऑफ चौसर सो चौसर रोड कैंटरबल टेल्स इन दैट पीरियड आफ्टर एटी सेवन ओके नॉट इन फिफ्टीन बट इट वॉज थर्टीन सो इन एज ऑफ एटी एटीन ही गॉट मैरिड टू एनी हाउस वे एंड शी वॉज एट ईयर्स ओल्डर ओके आठ साल बड़ी थी एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू सम यू नो हिस्टोरियंस लिटरी हिस्टोरियंस हिज लाइफ वॉज नॉट हैप्पी विद हर बट स्टिल ही हैड ही स्पेंड हिज होल लाइफ एंड नेक्स्ट इज ही वॉज शेयर होल्डर वेन ही वेंट टू लंडन ही बिकेम रियली फेमस एंड ही हैड ही वॉज शेयर होल्डर इन ग्लोब थिएटर जो ग्लोब थिएटर के बारे में हमने पिछले वीडियो में बात की थी इम्पोर्टेंट थिएटर है पूछा जाता है कि किससे एसोसिएटेड थे शेक्सपियर सो शेक्सपियर वॉज एसोसिएटेड ग्लोब थिएटर एंड ही वॉज शेयर होल्डर इन इट नेक्स्ट थिंग इज लेफ्ट टू लंडन फॉर स्ट्रेट फॉर्ड वो स्टेट स्ट्रेट फॉर्ड एक जगह है जहाँ गए तो आप इस तरह से याद रख सकते कि एवन से लंदन गए थे और लंदन से वो स्टेट फॉर्ड गए थे स्टेट फॉर्ड में उन्होंने एक जगह थी जब जिस जगह का नाम था न्यू प्लेस एंड न्यू प्लेस में उनका जो हाउस था सॉरी स्टेट फोर्ड में उन्होंने एक uh, उनका जो हाउस था उसका नाम था न्यू प्लेस राइट आई होप दिस दिस फैक्ट विल हेल्प यू इन योर एग्जाम बिकॉज दीज आर आस्ट नाउ लेट्स कम टू हिज वर्क्स एंड इट्स पीरियड सो एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी रोट हियर फोर पीरियड्स लेट मी टेल यू दैट इफ यू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल यू विल बी गेटिंग द नोटिफिकेशन बेल आइकन को जरूर हिट कर लीजिए क्योंकि ये सीरीज चलती रहेगी एंड देन आई स्टार्ट अ न्यू सीरीज फॉर क्रिटिसिजम एंड थ्योरी All right soon and uh, next word of the literary term literary term of the word day sorry literary term of the day i will start and uh, if you subscribe you will be getting the notification all right and you can uh, help me in uh, sharing the video by sharing the video and here is my whatsapp number if you are first visiting my channel agar aap pehli baar mere channel visit kar rahe hain to ye kaam aap kar sakte hain aur agar aap bar bar visit kar rahe hain to video ko like zarur kijiye so let's come to the topic again so his works first period early experiment experiments it was uh, he was kind of immature so you you can think that he was just doing experiments with his work and he was studying the works by you know university bits so that's why i made a video just before th- day 35 यूनिवर्सिटी वेट्स और उनका मैंने आप लोगों को इन्फ्लुएंस भी बताया था कि उन्होंने किस तरह से इन्फ्लुएंस किया था शेक्सपियर को सो आपको उस पढ़ लेना चाहिए या देख लेना चाहिए एक बार पाँच मिनट लगेंगे दस मिनट लगेंगे आपको वीडियो देख लेना चाहिए अपने नोट्स बना लेने चाहिए सो नाउ फर्स्ट पीरियड टीचर्स एंड्रोनिकस हैंनरी फोर्थ का उन्होंने फर्स्ट पार्ट लिखा था एंड नेक्स्ट वन इज लव लेव लॉस्ट दिस वॉज इज फर्स्ट ऑरिजिनल प्ले सो इफ इट इज आस्ट कि विच इज द फर्स्ट ऑरिजिनल प्ले so he loves lo- labor lost is the first original play <coughs> so here the comedy of errors romeo and uh, juliet the rape of lucrece and venus and adonis the poetry we see here next period is second period r- rapid growth and development तो ये चीज़ें आप याद रख लीजिए इट वॉज अर्ली एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड रेपिड ग्रोथ एंड डिवेलपमेंट हियर वी फाइंड सुप्रीम मास्टर पीसेस एंड हियर द लास्ट पीरियड दिस वन इज द लास्ट पीरियड यू कैन रिमेंबर इन दिस वे इस तरह से याद रख सकते हैं रेपिड ग्रोथ एंड डिवेलपमेंट यहाँ पे उन्होंने काफ़ी ग्रोथ की हमने वी फाइंड बेटर प्लॉट्स ह्यूमन नेचर ही स्टडीड ह्यूमन नेचर एंड ही यूज ब्लैंक वर्ड्स इन फिनोमिनल वे Here is a shortcut. मैंने यहाँ पर एक शॉर्टकट बनाने की कोशिश की थी जैसे मैंने याद किया है यू कैन रिमेंबर दीज थिंग्स हैंनरी फोर्स फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड ऑल राइट फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड मैरी वाइफ हैंनरी फोर्स मैरी वाइफ मैरी मीन्स हैप्पी सो हैंनरी फोर्स मैरी वाइफ वेंट टू वेनिस विद मर्चेंट सो मर्चेंट ऑफ द वेनिस वी रिमेंबर मैरी वाइफ ऑफ विंसर एंड हैंनरी फोर्थ सो इन दिस वे यू कैन रिमेंबर Henry Ford's merry wife went to Venice with merchant on the 12th night all right the 12th night they work but he do nothing about it who 
Now here he does nothing about it. Grammatically it's wrong. But because uh, much ado about nothing. You remember the work? Much ado about nothing. So we will be writing like this. He do nothing about it and says as you like it. <laughs> so here is the shortcut to remember this. You can uh, pause the video. You can write down the things. And watch online. Don't put the videos offline. <laughs> All right. It's a request. Third period. Supreme masterpieces. He wrote in this uh, period the greater tragedies. For tragedies, uh, tragedies uh, here you, you can uh, relate this Hokum G, Hamlet, Othello, King Lear, right, and uh, Macbeth, and Julius Caesar. So Hokum G is the shortcut to remember the uh, his tragedies. Sometimes it is asked. The last and fourth period is opens with Antony and Cleopatra because it is asked in exam. कि किस कौन सा फर्स्ट था जो फोर्थ पीरियड था वो कैसे स्टार्ट हुआ उसमें क्या था इम्पोर्टेंट एंड सेकंड पीरियड वो कौन था रैपिड ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट वाला पीरियड कौन सा था फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड यूजुअली हम सोचते हैं फोर्थ वाला होना चाहिए सॉरी सो हियर फोर्थ पीरियड ओपन्स विद एंटनी एंड क्लियोपेट्रा सिम्बल इन द टेम्पेस द विंटर स्टेल्स एंड वट वॉज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दिस दिस वर्क वी फाइंड केयरलेस कंस्ट्रक्शन so hopefully you enjoyed the video and you are making your notes and uh, this video will help you a lot so after completing this book i'm going to william j long i will be covering after this uh, this series and it will help you a lot so don't forget to like share comment comment me zarur kijiye if you want to give some suggestion some people are giving suggestions like you are writing tiny because uh, there is subject matter so i have to write down here now we will be talking about drama after shakespeare causes of decline we see a great decline in drama particularly and in prose after shakespeare particularly drama we can say there was a great uh, decline what were the main causes of decline kehne ka matlab ye hai ki jab shakespeare ke baad ka agar hum drama dekhe ki shakespeare ne bahut sare aur hum keh sakte brilliant uh, dramas likhe aur play he was uh, one of the greatest playwright सो so, उसके बाद हमें डिक्लाइन देखने को मिलता है कहने का मतलब कि अब हमें वो क्वालिटी नजर नहीं आ रही जो कि शेक्सपियर के एज में दिखाई दे रही थी उसका जो मेन कॉज था होता है एक्सोशन ऑफ क्रिएटिव स्प्रिट जो एक क्रिएटिव स्प्रिट थी वो पूरी तरह से यूज हो चुकी थी डिप्रेव्ड टेस्ट ऑफ ऑडियंस ऑडियंस में बहुत बड़ा चेंज हमें देखने को मिला इसके बाद ऑडियंस को यू नो दे वमिंग नाउ फॉर ट्राइबल मैटर्स बहुत ही सिंसियर ऑडियंस नहीं मिलते हमें इसके बाद देखने को फ्रेवलेस स्टेज जो अब ड्रामा जो लिखे जा रहे हैं बहुत ही फ्रेवलेस लिखे जा रहे हैं उतनी ज्यादा सिंसियरिटी उनमें नहीं है जो कि हमें शेक्सपियर के टाइम में देखने को मिलती है इसके बाद हम बेन जॉनसन के बारे में बात करेंगे जो कि शेक्सपियर के तुरंत बाद इमिडिएट शेक्सपियर आफ्टर शेक्सपियर ही वॉज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट रोमेटिस्ट उन्होंने काफी सारे ड्रामा लिखे कॉमेडीज लिखी हैं, सटायर लिखे हैं वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट देम इन डिटेल नेक्स्ट वॉज इन सिंसियर स्टेज फेवरेस्ट स्टेज ये सारे के सारे कॉजेज हैं हियर इन सिक्सटीन फोर्टी टू जस्ट आफ्टर ट्वेंटी सिक्स ईयर्स आफ्टर शेक्सपियर थिएटर्स वो क्लोज बाय प्यूरिटन्स और उन्हें कहा गया था ब्रीडर्स ऑफ लाइज रिमेम्बर दिस थिंग इट इज आस्ट ये फैक्ट काफी इंपॉर्टेंट है 1642 में थिएटर्स क्लोज कर दिए गए थे प्यूटेन से प्यूटेन के द्वारा और उसमें क्यों कहा गया था उसमें कहा गया था कि इनको ब्रीडर्स ऑफ लाइज भी कहा गया था नाउ लेट मी ही टेल यू दैट आई एम मेकिंग अ कोर्स फॉर लिटरी क्रिटिसिज्म इट विल बी अ पेड कोर्स आफ्टर यू नो 15 डेज इट विल बी अवेलेबल तो अब हम बात कर सकते हैं कि यहां पर जो प्यूरिटेन्स ने क्वेश्चन ये है कि वाई दे क्लोज इट उन्होंने थिएटर्स को क्लोज क्यों किया और उसके पीछे के रीजन क्या है अगर हम इसको थोड़ा सा इन डेप्थ जाने की कोशिश करेंगे उसके लिए हमें लिटरल क्रिटिसिज्म में हमें समझना पड़ेगा कि व्हाट प्लेटो टॉक्स अबाउट ड्रामा एंड पोएट्री अब आप सोच रहे होंगे कि पुलटन एंड इस टाइम का डायरेक्ट कनेक्शन हमारा लिटरल क्रिटिसिज्म और प्लेटो एरिस्टोटल से क्या है so we will be talking about uh, in those videos in literary criticism all right so they closed so this is one of uh, you know 
इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्ट 1642 रिमेंबर दिस और आप इसका को बना सकते हो 26 सिक्स ईयर्स लेटर यू नो आफ्टर शेक्सपियर लॉस ऑफ नेशनल अपील अब आपको देखने को नहीं मिलेगा कि जो अगर हम बेन जॉनसन के प्लेस भी देखें तो उसमें हमें नेशनल अपील देखने को नहीं मिलती जैसा कि शेक्सपियर में हमें मिलती है ब्यूमेंट एंड फ्लैचर रोट फॉर कोर्ट ईयर्स यहां पर आप देख सकते हैं कि जो ब्योमेंट एंड फ्लैचर ये मैंने एक यहां पर एक इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्ट लिखा है कि इस टाइम में वो कोर्ट ईयर्स के लिए लिख रहे थे मीन्स पर्टिकुलर इंडिविजुअल के लिए उनको प्लीज करने के लिए लिखा जा रहा है फॉर शेक्सपियर इन केस ऑफ शेक्सपियर एंड यूनिवर्सिटी बिट्स दैट वॉज नॉट ट्रू नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट बेन जॉनसन हु इज इंपॉर्टेंट आफ्टर शेक्सपियर ही वॉज बॉर्न ऑन फिफ्टीन सेवेंटी थ्री डाइड ऑन सिक्सटीन थर्टी सेवन ही वॉज बॉर्न ऑन वेस्ट मिनिस्टर वेस्ट मिनिस्टर सॉरी एंड फिफ्टीन नाइनटी एट ही किल्ड ही फेलो आर्टिस्ट इन अल 1598 में ये क्वेश्चन मुझे आई सॉ दैट इन यूपी पीजीटी ओके दिस आस्ट दिस वॉज आस्ट लाइक हु किल्ड हिज फेलो आर्टिस्ट इन अल सो आंसर वॉज बेन जॉनसन इन फिफ्टीन नाइनटी एट सिक्सटीन सेवनटीन पोइट टू किंग ही पोइट टू किंग राइट सो ही वॉज पोइट टू किंग इन सिक्सटीन सेवनटीन 1603 जीरो थ्री टू सिक्सटीन फिफ्टीन दिस वॉज द पीरियड वेन ही रोट हिज बेस्ट वर्क सो इन हिज बेस्ट वर्क देर आर सम कॉमेडीज सम सटायर्स वी हैव एंड दे हैव यू नो पर्टिकुलर क्वालिटीज वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दैम उनके बारे में बात करते हैं उनका जो पहला प्ले था द केस इज आल्टर्ड केस इज आल्टर वॉज रिटर्न इन फिफ्टीन नाइनटी एट एंड इट इट वॉज टोटली एक्सपेरिमेंटल लाइक इन केस ऑफ शेक्सपियर वी हैड यू नो फोर फेजेस सो फर्स्ट फेज वॉज एक्सपेरिमेंटल तो इस तरह से हम याद रख सकते हैं कि अगर हम इसी तरह से चौसर का देखें कि चौसर का जो फर्स्ट सेकेंड एंड थर्ड जो पीरियड थे उसमें जो फर्स्ट पीरियड है वो एक्सपेरिमेंटल है सो यूजली द राइटर वट एवर दे राइट दे रोड देर बेस्ट वर्क लेटर बट द फर्स्ट पीरियड इज ऑलवेज एक्सपेरिमेंटल दिस इज द कंक्लूजन इस तरह से हम कंक्लूजन निकाल सकते हैं His satire, his satires are everyman in his humor, and uh, this was his first work which brought him great success. And second thing is that in this work he introduced his theory of humor. उन्होंने इसी work में अपनी theory of humor introduce किया था. You can go through the question that what was Ben Jonson's theory of humor in order to understand it better. इसको थोड़ा और जानने के लिए आप इस तरह से search कर सकते हैं. इट पाइनियर्स रियलिज्म एंड न्यू क्लासिसिज्म यही एक वर्क है जहां से हमें रियलिज्म एंड न्यू क्लासिसिज्म के बारे में पता चलता है और हम कह सकते हैं कि यहां से इसकी स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट हम इस वर्क को मान सकते हैं ही प्रोपाउंड थ्योरी ऑफ ह्यूमर थ्योरी ऑफ ह्यूमर बेन जॉनसन ने प्रोपाउंड किया था उन्होंने दी थी ये थ्योरी सिंथियाज रिवील विच गॉट पब्लिश इन सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड रिजल्ट ऑफ क्वेरल विद हिस कंटेम्परेज सो देर वॉज अ क्वेरल and this work was the re- result the poetaster was the next uh, satire now let's come to the everyman out of his humor and walpon or the fox uh, you can get summaries of uh, these works on my channel epicon the silent woman yeah woman all right w for women yahan pe jo w hai yahan pe women hai epicon the silent woman it was well constructed prose comedy so this was prose comedy this is important to remember <coughs> sometimes these questions are asked which is the prose comedy by ben johnson sometimes it is asked that uh, in which work he propounds his theory of humor okay so which work was result of quarrel with contemporaries so you can prepare some questions like this epicon or the silent women well, well constructed prose comedy the alchemist was overwhelming love for money so this was the theme of the work overwhelming love for money this was the theme the alchemist you can uh, find the summary as well the bartholome fair was the mature satiric comedy and here there is a very important uh, quotation 
from this work is sports with human follies and not with crimes. So this was the quotation for this work, the Bartholomew New Fair. The quotation is sports with humor, uh, human follies and not with crimes. Hello guys, if you like my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit this bell icon so that you can get notified for my videos. Here are some of my other channels. If you like, please do subscribe. First is Daily Lesson with Kaushik for English language. And uh, Mission Free from Fear is for motivation and uh, self-defense. Seated, sure, is for particularly...